Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett. This is a ramble. It goes until midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States. And a big howdy to you. Uh, I am not going to put on any uh, interview with anybody tonight, number one, because I don't have any. I don't know. I planned it badly that way. I don't have any. And uh, on top of that, I'm putting stuff away here. Uh, I have. Um, I, I was watching the the debate, and I figured you want to talk about it, so you know. Uh, I just uh, you know I just watched it, and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, tonight, I almost wasn't going to do the show tonight. Didn't know if I'd be doing the show or not tonight because uh, I've had a tooth missing here. And I'm tired of looking like a Trump voter. So um, today I had an implant done where they implant a, uh, a little thing into your, into your jaw. And then they cover it up again, stitch it up. I got some stitches in there. And it sits there for about two months, okay? And then if it looks like it's adhered itself to the bone just right, they will then put what they call an abutment on it. And then they will send out for a replacement tooth. When I'm through, I will have that gap filled. Now, this is going to cost about $3,000 that I'm finding places to get the money from. Uh, because it's a lot of money to spend on something like this. But I'm doing it for one very particular reason. Is that uh, uh, I, I just don't like that gap in my mouth. And um, so I want a full set of teeth, at least fake or not, and so I'm going to fill that area up. It's been this way for several years now. Here's what happened, okay? I go to this new dentist that Marjorie has, and she says, oh, well, you have all this insurance. we got to do something. I said, well, I, I said, I've come to you because I want to do a, uh, uh, an implant. She says, okay. And she had me meet with her, 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 uh, her partner who does the implants, and he checked into it, and he said, uh, yeah, okay, we can do it. But then she says, let's take some x-rays. And she finds one thing. And then she finds another. And then she finds another. And by the end of the year, I've used up all my insurance money. So there's no money left to do the implant. So I then go to the next year, and the same thing happens. Finally, this year, I said, let's do the implant. And she uses up most of my money, but... Uh, uh, I found some other money. I found out that we have two dental plans. Yes, she has one at work. They've been paying for all this time, okay, about $1,500 a year. And then we have mine from SAG-AFTRA, which is going to lapse at the end of the year, which is $2,500. So I can use one or the other to, you know, pay it off. So some of it will be taken care of, but I'm still going to have to put out at least two grand. At least, okay? But I just want to get this filled up. You know, before, And then I'm going to drop dead. That will be the next thing that will happen, okay? So, uh, it's, um, I, so I wasn't going to do the show tonight because he went and did the implant, which, by the way, if you ever have to have an implant, I've had the root canal I had a couple of weeks ago was more arduous than this thing. This thing, he just numbed me up really good. One one shot really hurt, but he numbed me up really good. And then he went in there, did some drilling, and he bore out a hole, and then he screwed this thing in, and then he stitched it up and sent me home. Forty minutes it took him. I was counting. Uh, and uh, it was maybe one of the easiest procedures I've had in a long time. I've had this procedure before, but the other doctor I went to... Uh, Gave gas, okay, which kind of, you know. Also, if I talk too fast, I don't know, I'm getting dizzy lately if I talk too fast. I don't know what that's all about. The, some kind of fatigue thing or something that has to do with all the, the radiation and stuff that I had uh, on me. So I think that's the, 
what that problem is. So it's one thing or another. And, um, you know, I almost wasn't going to do the show tonight just because I went, hey, I had the tooth thing today. I've got a good excuse. But then it wasn't really, it's not really bothering me. It's a little, you know, what hurts is all the stuff around it where he had the implements in there and was working on it. But for the most part, it just, it was fine, you know. So then I said, well, you know, I really got to do a show tonight because uh, we've got all these people uh, who uh, uh, are uh, doing, uh, coming on here uh, to be part of the uh, citizen panel because they're going to want to talk about this debate tonight. So uh, let's, if you can, start calling the Zoom address, which is on our GabNet page, gabnet.net. Over in the right-hand column, you see a thing that says, click here to call Zoom, and you just click on that, and it'll take you there. And you don't have to even have Zoom in your, in your computer. What, what did you do? She slammed the door shut on me. Did you hear that? Anyway, uh, was I being too noisy? I don't know. But anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, so you can start calling in. In fact, here comes somebody now, and we, you know, I really don't want to hog it all to myself uh, because then I'd be kind of like Donald Trump, wouldn't I, if I was hogging it all to myself? Now let me see here. Here comes Charlie, and here comes uh, Jeff. Okay, let's let's go to the Zoom panel. Uh, Charlie, at, at, turn on your camera. There we go. There he is. Hi, Charlie. How are you this Hi. evening? And how are you, Jeff? Turn on your microphone. Turn on your microphone. Just click. There we go. See? There I did. Yeah, I can tell when your mic's on and when it's not on. I know. Uh, yes. Uh, well, let's start with Charlie. Charlie, you watch the debate? Nope. Don't watch debates. Oh, Ooh. really? No, they're not debates. They just get up there and make speeches, and I can read about the speeches tomorrow. Uh, this was a debate. Did you watch it, Jeff? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it was a war. What was your takeaway? Well, actually, all I got to say is Trump was an asshole, and he could not shut his mouth. He couldn't stop being an asshole. Yeah, and they he, couldn't tell him to shut up. I hate to say this when somebody's not here, but did he remind you of somebody tonight? <laughs> I do I, I didn't think about that until now, but yeah. I mean, uh, the guy wouldn't shut up. So you know, like, so. anytime Biden started talking, he would start interrupting. And finally, uh, Chris Wallace had to take him to task for Several it. times. For it, and saying, it didn't help. At one point, Chris Wallace said, Mr. President, would you like to sit here and I'll go up there? <laughs> And uh, I, I think that, I think Biden won the election tonight by just doing one thing, saying something to Trump that we've wanted to say to him for years. Will you please shut up? Yeah. And referring to him as that clown. Yeah, he did call him a clown. I mean, he, he, he read him the riot act, but he only did it when he deserved it. He didn't do it out of any malice, out of any spite, but out of the fact that, number one, you know, he, he, we knew he was going to go after Hunter Biden. We knew that was going to happen. Uh, and there's nothing worse than going after somebody's kid, you know? Yes. Uh, and he, you know, uh, uh, Trump said, well, you know, he was thrown out of the military and blah, blah, blah. And he said, my son had a drug problem as many Americans do. And he worked on it, and he doesn't have one today. You know, that was the most honest, forthcoming answer I've seen anybody give. But the fact that he even had to drag his son into this, you know, and had to explain that his son was a drug addict, and that's why he had all, a lot of problems early on in life, uh, was... Uh, I, I think kind of a heart-wrenching moment. I, I wouldn't want to be a parent and have to do that, you know, even to become president of the United States. 
So, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much it, you know. And uh, I, uh, uh, I, I felt, how'd you feel that Biden handled himself? I thought he was pretty good for most of the times. Occasionally, mm -hmm. uh, his speech, he would lose, lose a sentence or two before he couldn't get the right word well, you out. Know that, you know that Joe, Joe Biden, when he was younger, had a stuttering problem, yep. mm -hmm. and he still does, actually. I mean, you always have a stuttering problem. You just learn to work your way around it, and you find right. methodology and so on for doing your way around it. And that became a little apparent here and there. Yeah. But, you know, that doesn't make him any less of a candidate. I mean, just the utter lying on the part of Trump. I mean, when, when they said to him, they asked him, is it true you only paid $750 in taxes in the two, first two years that you were president. And he said, no, I paid millions. Well, it's just not true. I mean, his companies may have paid millions, but this is we're talking personal income taxes, all right? Mm -hmm. And so he lied about that, you know. Yeah. Um, he was, a, he was a, quite, a, quite a liar in this whole thing. It was amazing. Uh, let's see here. By the way, is anybody out there uh, who's ready to talk tonight, too? Because uh, nobody seems to be calling. Let me see here. Uh, we have, uh, uh, oh, YouTube. What, really? Why does YouTube yeah. look differently tonight? Yeah. Okay. Um, YouTube has decided that it wants to give me the dark mode, which I don't really want, but I'm getting it anyway, so... Uh, that's how it looks tonight. Now, all these companies are changing the way their uh, their thing looks, and it's pretty terrible. It's pretty terrible. Um, uh, Alex, you jumped more than Chris Wallace moderating the debate. What does that mean? You jumped more. Mm -hmm. it says Biden could have nailed specifics much more clearly. Yeah, but you aren't say for, saying, Forbin, how lousy Trump looked tonight in just being a, just a fatuous bully, basically, was how he looked. He came off looking very badly. But, Alex, you jumped more than Chris Wallace moderating the debate. I have no idea what that means. Makes no oh. sense to me at all. Do you, do you know what he means, Chris, uh, Charles? No, I yeah. can't. By the way, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I am maybe putting a moderator on this chat room or doing away with it all together uh, because people have been uh, trolling it like crazy. And uh, it, it's, you know, I think, well, who was it, Forbin, was it uh, Patriot or was it Forbin Colossus the other night who must have done it up? Oh, well, that was American Patriot. American man. Patriot did it a hundred times. Okay. <laughs> His were the only posts. Yeah, yeah. His and her, his were the only posts because other people didn't want to join in. You know. Hello, Brian. How are you? I'm doing all right. Yeah. Did you watch the debate? Absolutely. Absolutely. What did you think? I'm sorry. What did you think? Well, I thought that even though uh, I don't, I still don't plan on voting for either one of them. Certainly not Trump. But yeah. Trump sounded desperate, like a cornered animal. Couldn't couldn't shut his fucking mouth. That's Re for sure. Uh, yeah, that's a good point you're making. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you can filibuster him. Uh, oh, you yeah. have. That indeed he was. You know, uh, he was filibustering, and he was trying. He figured if he kept talking, he could play out the clock. You know, and. Um, <laughs> He was sound biting, is what he was doing. I'm going to use that as a verb. He was sound biting. Yeah, but he's uh, a creature of contemporary America. But for instance, um, he would not. He he couldn't. He he was trying to hedge the the money thing, the seven hundred and fifty dollar thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was saying, "I paid millions of dollars." Well, no, he didn't pay millions of dollars. Maybe his companies did, although I doubt if they did. You know, I wish Chris Wallace would have asked him for specifics. When you say million, I don't remember him asking Trump for specifics. When you say millions, sir, what exactly are you referring to? 
He yeah. never asked him that. Well, I yeah. don't think he did, unless I'm missing something. If I were Chris Wallace in that situation, I might be a little reticent to ask something like that, only because I know I'm going to get just get, you know, the dance around. I'm not going to get a straight answer out of him. I mean, uh, 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 Biden said, well, are you willing to re re release your taxes? Come on, release your taxes. And he waltzed around that one, you know. Yes, yeah. uh, Chris. Uh, Chris. <laughs> Charlie Wallace. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> There's worse people you can mistake me for. Well, I just watched two, an hour and a half of Chris Wallace. Yeah. And one of the few times I felt sorry for him. I think the other time I felt sorry for him was when he interviewed Trump. Yeah. Mm. No. Yeah. Anyway. anyway, what I wanted to say was uh, that I paid more than $750 in federal income tax on my Social Security alone in 2016. <laughs> Thanks to Ronald Reagan, yeah, so I paid more on my Social Security than Trump paid on all his millions of dollars of, of uh, revenue. And why why do we pay tax on our Social Security? Because Reagan wanted to make up for the the tax cut that he passed in in eighty one. Yeah, because I mean, I, I you know I never could understand that one because isn't that money that's taxed? It's called a a. a uh, a job tax or something. What is it? Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to be. Thanks to Ronald Reagan, he validated real life Gordon Geckos. And one of them is our president. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Although, you know, you, you give our president, I think, to begin with, I, I really think it, it, the Republicans should realize this man is ruining their brand. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he has no respect for the brand. He's no Republican. What brand, though? To me, it sounds like it sounds like he's saying a lot of the uh, quiet parts out loud. If, and I'm also damning yeah. the uh, Democratic establishment too. He's saying he's like the John Gotti of American politicians. Well, if you think or if you assume that he is uh, a uh, that that you know that he is the spokesperson for the Republican Party, that he's the representative of the Republican Party in office, that he's ruining their brand. In other words, this is going to come back to bite them in the ass for years. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so, too. I want to see Mitch McConnell especially lose a Senate seat. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I want to see him in, as a permanent Me minority leader until he retires or dies. Well, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Okay. Uh, you got to remember, he's from where? Kentucky? Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. Uh, asking they them. did elect a more progressively minded governor, though. Kentucky instead of well, I mean, all those states are changing, mainly because black mm. people have kind of gotten more of a right to vote than they had before. You know, it's yeah. still they still make it difficult for in some states for blacks to vote, uh, but it's gotten better. Okay. Yeah. Well, supposedly Amy McGrath is within a few points of, of McConnell. Well, I hope so. I would like to see McConnell thrown out of there. I would like to see uh, Lindsey Graham thrown out. It looks like he might be going. Yeah, he might be. Perhaps he does too. Yeah. Um, well, but that he is. Yeah, but he I was begging for money the other night. <laughs> was he really? Yeah. Son of At a least man. that's what MSNBC said. Yeah. So I mean, I I I wonder what uh, you know what. Uh, uh, what, what's going to happen with... Um, That's not entirely, by the way, Alex, it? hyperbolic when I say plausibly regarding Lindsey Graham. Because uh, I've, I've, there there are like some, it's like third, or, third hand sources, so consider what it is. But yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it were true. Like, uh, gay prostitutes who claim that they've, you know, they've gone into specifics with the guy uh, in terms of what he would want them to do and well, was, look, you know, I'm not going to go and accuse Lindsey Graham of being gay. And and the reason I'm not is because what's wrong with being gay? No, it's wrong with being gay and uh, being uh, homophobic. Internally. Well, I don't know that he's homophobic. What has he done that is homophobic? As far as I know, he, he's, he's a member of a political party. Well, no, 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 no. What has he personally done that's homophobic? I mean, he well, may he have... He opposed gay marriage. He, did did he oppose gay marriage? Yeah. 
Yeah, there you go. I don't I know. know. I'm, I'm, st- I'm straight, know. and I'm against straight marriage, for crying out loud. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Like I said, I'm trying Should to I leave. <laughs> what? Should I leave? Yeah. <laughs> Brian? No, I, I said, like I said, and he's, I wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised at all. Internalized homophobia. And I didn't know that specifically, but I, you know, just the fact that he represents a political party that wants to be illegalize uh, gay marriage is enough for me. But to is say it a that policy of the Republicans to illegalize gay marriage? I've I'm never, sorry? I've never seen that. You know, I'm, there may I'm, be individual Republicans who have taken that stance, and I would imagine there's some Democrats who have taken that stance. They want to. They want to. I've come to understand that they want to reincorporate that into the Republican platform, as much as they want to overturn, you know, a pre-existing uh, thing that grants women the right to choose what they can do with their own body. They want to go. They want to revert the clock back. It's not unprecedented for this particular political party to want to do that, and not just in terms of Roe versus Wade, but also in terms of. Uh, you know, the court deciding on gay marriage. The one thing in the debate that, that Biden hedged his bets on was the question of would he add two new justices to the Supreme Court or three in order to Good. level it out. And he didn't answer that. He kind of hedged that. Didn't. At least he didn't rule it out. Well, I think the answer I was waiting for him to give was I'm not president of the United States, and I can't do it. And when the time comes, I'll make that decision. Right now, it doesn't look like the right idea, but it may be the right idea down the line. I thought I heard him say repeatedly, especially with that, uh, I thought I heard him say something to the effect of uh, the uh, Democrats and the House and in the Senate, what they want is not exactly not always aligned with what I want to do if I am elected president. And he kind of, I thought he kind of gave that non-answer politician response regarding court packing. Let me say this about Biden. He's not my idea of the kind of guy I would want to vote for. Okay. (laughs) You know, I would, for instance, I would vote for Cuomo in a heartbeat. How about you, Jeff? Same thing, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, but and I would be enthusiastic about him. I mean, be, I'd be going door to door, knocking on doors. All right. I gotta ask this question of you, mm-hmm. Alex. Uh, what uh, and, and not to delineate from the debate, but what uh, what did you like about Cuomo over you know, four three years ago or whatever? His competitor, Cynthia, was, Cynthia Nixon, was it? Yes. Cynthia Nixon was an amateur. Cynthia Nixon. Really, I don't think was, you know, she should have taken some other office first, okay? But she didn't even come close, okay? She didn't even come close to winning. Uh, uh, You know, it wasn't like she was breathing down Cuomo's neck and, you know, no, Mm -hmm. no. In fact, she didn't even make it to the final cut, did she? No. So, I mean, and, uh, you know, Cynthia Nixon, we already got one TV star. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Do we want another one? Especially with the same amount of experience? No. Um, so that, that that's my, well, my take. We'll on. see. Come after if Trump does win re-election, mm-hmm. either whatever whatever games he pulls out of his ass to win re-election, we'll be, we'll be thinking to myself, well, maybe we need someone from the left who's just as much of a bomb thrower verbally as uh, Trump is. If he wins re-election, if he doesn't, then well, your 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 opinion has a lot more validity than. Well, you know. I mean, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see. I don't know that Cuomo wants to run for president. I mean, his father, for instance, everybody wanted his father to run because his father <clears throat> was just a great, great speaker. All right, and orator, and um, uh, and they didn't they didn't go for that, you know. Um. So, I mean, he didn't want to run. And I think that there's something in the Cuomo family that doesn't want to run for president. You know, I mean, Cuomo, for instance, is having, he's he's having a nightmare as governor, all right? But he's also having a great time as governor. Well, we've had an African-American as as president with Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. Have we ever had an Italian, someone of 
I'm trying to think. Have we ever had an Italian as president? I wish Josh were here. He probably would have the goods on that. I don't mm. think so. I want to say no. I, I don't know. I, Someone like Josh would know that. Yeah, I yeah. would say no, too. Uh, there's been never been a Jewish president. That I know. Never had that. We could have had one with uh, Joseph Lieberman, but <laughs> that wasn't good. Yeah, we had an Irish president with Kennedy. Yep, we had an Irish yeah. president uh, and a Catholic. The big mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. against Kennedy when he was running was, no, America will never elect a Catholic. And, uh, <laughs> you know. Before you answer. And uh, with Obama, they said okay. America will never, uh, uh, you know, elect a, a, a black man. But look what happened. They did. So, you know, I mean. We could very well have a black female in huh? two years. We could. We could. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, I think that the, the you know, the notion of, uh, oh, gee, we got to have a woman as president, you know. I don't know that whoever is president is necessarily the, a big deal, especially now. Look at how, how Trump has devalued that job. I don't I mean, give a shit who the president is as long as the policies that I like, at yeah. least by and large, get passed. I, all I care mm-hmm. about with the president at this point is I want one who's going to save my life, you mm-hmm. know, and not threaten it. And this president mm-hmm. threatens it. I mean, today, uh, I, uh, I, I, t- I take a lift for 35 bucks to get me to my dentist. And then coming home, I always take a bus. Uh, and luckily today, I was afraid to take the bus because the rate of infection has gone up in the state of New York. Not by much, but mm-hmm. enough. And it's, Same not, here in and, it, and it's not in my neighborhood or in Manhattan. It's these, may I say this, Yids out in Brooklyn. These Orthodox Jews who refuse to wear masks, who are, you know, who then get they together. They wear a mask. Huh? It's on their head. It's, it's on their head, yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> they don't wear a mask, and then they go, they had Rosh Hashanah. That's got to be the biggest Petri dish, you, you know. They have the prayer for the dead at, at Rosh Hashanah, which is uh, very interesting. Um, uh, because the, the prayer for the dead uh, could be probably recited to people who are in that room getting infected and are going to be dead as a result of it. Uh, you know, uh, but uh, out in Brooklyn, out in that part of Brooklyn, the, the rate just went sky high. Um, you said something, though, Alex, um, that made me think, yeah. uh, activated memory here when yeah. I was watching the debates. Biden uh, used that word dog whistling against Trump. And yeah, he's He's definitely used uh, dog whistling many, many times. But I'm thinking, I'm sitting there thinking, I was sitting there thinking, I'm going to ask you the question, I'm going to ask the panel the question. What's the difference between a politician who uses dog whistling in their uh, dialogues or their debates and a stochastic terrorist? What's the difference between the two? Say that again. What's the difference between, in other words, what's the difference between a dog whistler and a stochastic terrorist? I don't know what you mean by dog whistler. Someone who uses like uh, certain groups in the inner city, meaning they'll say that when, or Trump will say something like that when he really means black guys and black people. Okay, and what's the other term? What's the other term you were using? Stochastic terrorist. What is a stochastic terrorist? You're coming up. I just wonder what the difference is between the two. How they're not one and the same. I don't know uh, one from the other. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, Brian. Well, a stochastic terrorist, from what I understand, is someone who makes uh, subtle remarks, say, on a radio broadcast that could influence a listener base to commit acts of terrorism, to commit acts of vandalism, rioting, so on and so forth. They themselves aren't responsible for it, but their rhetoric somehow. And someone who uses dog whistling, or maybe they just go in. Well, I mean, it's people who go out and do... It was a a stray thought I had in my head. Yeah, I don't know, but you came up with terms that I just, you know, dog whistle, statistic, whatever you called it. I can't remember Mm -hmm. that. Uh, I never heard... heard There's a meme on Facebook that defines it, too. Stochastic Mm -hmm. terrorist. Oh, okay, well. If there's a meme on Facebook, it must be right. Yeah, I, but I didn't hear it there first. Yeah. I heard it from the Tom Hartman program. Oh, good old, good old Tom Hartman. 
Yeah. I think this stochastic, stochastic terrorist is the one who, who, who uses subtle uh, implications to stow, stir up violence. Are you going to dog whistler may not be exactly get, trying to get their people to get violent. They just want to get their people to. I, I was thinking about Tom Hartman the other day, by the way, because Tom Hartman is the biggest asshole I can name. And, yeah, and, it doesn't seem he's very a, no, no, here's what he did. He went, he was on, in the employ of RT television. Do you know who RT was? I do. And yeah. I consider them just as viable as Go MSNBC. watch Agents of Chaos. You'll find out what RT was. You know, he was working for the Russians. He was working for Russian propaganda. It's funded in part by the Russian government. But, no, uh, not funded in like part. It was run by the Russian government. Right. The woman who was running it. Uh, is on this documentary, in fact, on HBO, talking about her time at RT. And, and like they... I said before in a previous program, I don't see how that's any worse than, you know, our media outlets being run by the likes of Goldman Sachs and Lockheed Martin. Uh, the difference is they're American, not a foreign government. Well, they're American assholes versus no, a foreign no, government. No, no, you're no, you're, 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 you're trying to make your argument by going in a different direction. They may be American assholes, but they're Americans. They're not Russian assholes, Okay. And, well, and RT was run, run and so. operated by the Russians. You know, it wasn't that they were, it wasn't like they were supporting it. They owned it. Yeah. yeah. No one should ever listen to one media source. I'll give you yeah. that much. Is anybody no, else going to call tonight or did, is everybody just completely trumped out or something? <laughs> They're exhausted. Huh? Because in, They're which, exhausted. in which case, I mean. You say I blame them. I may close this thing down early just because, mm -hmm. you know, what the hell? Mm -hmm. Why not? Uh, you know. I, yeah, Jack Bishop may not have anybody mm -hmm. on his program after this one, he, considering how bad yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Jeff. One thing I noticed, uh, there was some uh, discussions about California and all the trees that were on fire. And... Uh, Trump was all complaining about it. And uh, Pam told me, she goes, most of those trees are owned by the government. Federal government land? U.S. government. It, yeah, it's, federal, it's that, government land. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. so you know, again, uh, you know, he's, he's uh, I, I just, yeah, I just watched the guy and I was just so happy to hear somebody uh it says uh, the ramble audio feed died no it didn't die i'm sorry it's still going out in fact let me just check i i have a way of checking here without uh having to uh, uh let me see here let me go here somebody just said that you know the audio feed is out is it out it is out hmm well, I don't know what happened to the audio feed because it's go it should be going out, but it isn't, and there's a problem. Uh -huh. Huh? You what? didn't put your quarter in today. I didn't put my quarter in today. That's right. I All I know is we're in trouble regardless. Yeah. I feel like whoever wins, I lose. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea why, uh, why it wouldn't be working. Maybe that's every reason not to be doing the show tonight. Uh, here comes Tony. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let me admit him. Uh, let me see uh, here. Why is uh, why is it well? Oh, there it is. It's working again now. Oh, I'm gonna say. Yeah. yeah, it's working now. It wasn't working for a couple of minutes there, uh, but uh, I'm glad I didn't stop it here because then I won't stop the it won't stop the recording. Um, uh, but uh, yes, we were down for a few moments there and now we're on see folks i'll prove to you we're on maybe that's every reason not to be doing the show today. see okay there we go okay so it's all right okay anyway um hello tony did you watch the debate unfortunately yes you did he's a he's a boy he was typical it was typical Trump. yeah i mean what did you think what was your takeaway you know I wish they would have killed his mic because when they have two minutes of rebuttal, mm -hmm. his whole mantra going in was, you saw Trump, whenever Biden spoke to try to answer for his two minutes, he would just over-talk him. 
I mean, yeah. I, Trump, Trump wreaked the desperation. I mean, I'm, I'm watching like some people yes, saying he, like, oh, yeah. you know, he's, he's playing to his base. But what, what is I his mean, base? A bunch of rude what, people? I mean, what, what, what is his base? I, I'm going to tell you something. One thing I didn't like what Chris Wallace did is it's like, couldn't Alex, couldn't they have killed his mic and say, listen, enough already. He's no, you know why they him. couldn't, Tony? I'll tell you why. Because then people would really gripe that the fix was in. They killed the president's mic. They wouldn't let him talk. Well, it would have been funny, but you're right, Alex. You're absolutely right. Yeah, that's why they won't do it. Uh, I'm surprised that Chris Wallace got as in Trump's face as he did about his interruptions. <laughs> Because yeah, he's like, are you ever going to listen? I mean, you yeah, know, no, but he, at one point, he's, uh, Trump said, why is it you're telling me to be quiet? He said, because you've been the, the only one doing any interrupting. Trump's just projecting, saying that Biden was interrupting him more than he was interrupting mm. Biden. Bullshit. Yeah. I heard it yeah. with my own two ears. I saw it with my own two eyes. Jeff? That, that's Did the they thing. have uh, an agreement not to stop things? Not to turn the sound off. They probably I did. I, I, I probably th think that it was agreed to leave it on. Well, I don't. I don't think anybody's considered that they've had a need to do that. Yeah. Oh, we I, think an adult can control. You himself. know. Yeah. In this case, there was a reason. And if I were to do another debate, which they're going to do, I would say if the president, if you, if, if if either of you start interrupting the other, we're going to cut your mic. Yep. Yeah, I would. Okay. And maybe that'll stop it. Uh, like you said, Alex, would that not feed into the, into the conspiratorial uh, notion that a fix is in and the media has it? Blah blah well, blah. Well, I don't know what yeah. Trump is writing now. On uh, let's let's go over to let's see, let's oh, go over to works. let's go to Twitter here, and I will uh, let's search for uh, the real Donald Trump. Uh, uh, Probably told Donald, Donald uh, the uh, real Donald Glover, the real Donald, the real Donald Trump. Let's see here, Donald J. Trump. Uh, I don't follow him, but let's see what he has to say. Regardless of who you were, oh, no, this is somebody else. Uh, never seen this before. Cash for ballot. Uh, let me see here, Donald Trump. I don't think this is necessarily him, however. Yeah, because you know what? I was watching him during the debate to Twitter. I mean, somebody, they were Twittering. Somebody must have worked his account because he was been Twittering while he was debating. So that means that proves that he's not saying what – he's not telling them what to write. Yeah, the real Donald Trump. Well, that should be it, right? Um, uh, yeah. I'm trying to just see what he might have said or not said. Uh, but Trump did have one advantage over Biden, though. What, what advantage was that? He took a, he took he took Biden to the cleaners. In my humble though biased opinion, he took Biden to the cleaners concerning his uh, record in uh, the uh, incarceration bill that he wrote in the early nineties. He really it was the chink in uh, Biden's armor yeah. that he exploited. Uh, okay, he let's let's give him that. Does that mean he won the debate? No. No. Okay. So you know. Listen, I said you know, I got to tell you, Biden, Biden has been in public service how many years now? 47 years. 47 years. In those 47 years, especially when the mentality of this country has changed over that time, mm -hmm. uh, you're bound to have made some a lot of mistakes. I mean, he's got, yes, they can go after his record, but, you know, he's got a record. What record does Donald Trump have? He was on TV. You know, uh, 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 Trump is making his own record right now, and it's right a pretty now. flimsy one. Well, Trump could also say two words that may tip the election further in his favor. When we, in the context of those 47 years that Biden served, which is about like three or four terms too long, and yeah. can't hint term limits. And I have a piece of legislation that I can show to the, the on my website as to how I will get that done. Yeah. And you know, people will Trump doesn't that. want term limits. In fact, he doesn't like the limits on the president's term. That's why he won't. He won't. But he could have the. I'm saying he could have the election turned and tilted. Well, no. Head. If he if he went for term limits, he'd be cutting the throat of his own party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, the duopoly. Right. They don't want him going after that. So. 
But uh, I wonder what uh, Drudge is saying about it. Uh, Drudge is always different. You know, he, he has, you know he's not a big uh, Trump fan anymore. Uh, so uh, let's see. Let's go to Drudge Report. Okay. With the top points are from the right. Uh, Again. It says here, his headline is Debate Circus, and the word debate is crossed out. Will you shut up, man? Oldest candidates in history. <laughs> He's not entirely wrong there. Yep. Uh, chaos reigns in hell debate. Wolf Blitzer, I wouldn't be surprised if this was the last one. Uh, insult to circus workers, say circus workers. Uh, mm -hmm. Biden, under this president, we've had, we become weaker, sicker, poorer, more divided, and more violent. So, uh, and then a review here supposedly says Chris Wallace loses all control. But hmm. remember, Trump is an end result. He is a symptom, not the cause. Uh, well, yes, we could say that. Um, but here, 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 here is that uh, uh, so people can see it. Uh, this is the, uh, this is the, uh, let me see here. Let me bring it up here. There we go. There you go. That's the, the headline in uh, in uh, in Drudge. So, and it was it was it was a circus. And no question about it. You know. So. Uh, um, somebody says uh, Trump venerates Teddy Roosevelt, but Roosevelt would have hated Trump. <laughs> so anyway. Oh, undoubtedly. Yeah. So we. Which which well both Roosevelts. Franklin and Theodore. Yeah. I'm sure they meant Theodore. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so uh, let me see here. What, what else? Let me just uh, uh, let me just uh, go here so I can see how we're doing. Okay. Um, you know, if more people don't call tonight, uh, I think I'm going to call this a wrap at 1130. Uh, you know, I'm doing this with having an a, a implant put in my mouth today. That's how what. You that, how do you feel about that? How's it? Uh, it's feeling okay. I'm, you know, it's not. I'm, I'm on antibiotics. He gave me some antibiotics mm -hmm. to take just to be, be on those. Just to be on the safe side, you know. How long does he want you on those? Uh, probably. I don't. Know, I have enough for a week, but I don't think I need that. I think all I need is enough to keep the immediate infection away. I go back in two weeks, and he takes the stitches out. You know, and then I sit, I sit here and wait for it to get better. Anyway, um, was there any part of this debate you felt made you feel better about Biden or better about, about Trump? I can't see anything that would make you feel better about Trump. I, oh, I can say that. I liked how Biden handed himself. Yeah, I give him credit there. You think he handled himself well? Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah, did you did you feel it was unpresidential or wrong of him to tell Trump to shut up well, or to refer to him as a clown? I think it's appropriate. Yeah, I think he's saying what I think he's saying everything we've wanted to say. Yeah, if yeah. we had Trump in a room, we'd probably say shut uh, shut up. It's driving me crazy. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> you know, there was a person, I'm as I said, there was a per person that used to call the show, yeah. and tonight Trump reminded me of him because he uh, was in a square, right? Yeah. And he was, uh, you know, all, all, all the things that that person would do, he was imitating Trump. Actually, you're right. He did a good job of portraying him. The <laughs> Imagine Phil had a dead-on persona. <laughs> well, we're not saying names here. Oh, because yeah. the person we, doesn't we, call, call the person the doesn't name we cannot say. person doesn't call the show anymore. People yeah. say, "Have you talked to him since?" And the answer is, "I haven't heard a word from him." You know. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, but, he did have him nailed pretty good, Phil. I mean, oh, yeah. I'm not saying anymore. There you yeah. go. Yeah. There you go. Well, Did I mean, hear? what I do miss is I wish that there were, you know, uh, there some right w was a right winger on here. 
Uh, that's why whenever Patrick calls, I'm happy, you know, because at least I it brings, heard from him. Well, I wish he would. Yeah, it brings balance to the show. I think uh, is he is he a Republican or is he an like a conservative independent? Um, I think he considers himself a conservative. Yeah, but he's an is he an independent? Like I'm going to be after this election? No, <laughs> no I, 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 I well I, he's a, a independent to this point that I think mm -hmm. that it, uh, last time he didn't vote for Trump, but he didn't vote for Hillary either. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he probably yeah. voted for a third party candidate. Mm -hmm. You know which. Um, uh, you, you know, I just don't see what, uh, what the, how that really plays. You know, we, you're calling you would, Jack Bishop. You're calling Jack Bishop, though, uh, said it best. I didn't think of it until he, he he brought it up. He said you really shouldn't call these other political parties third parties. I should call them alternate parties. Well, I well, think I, what we do is there's we, more than there's more than one. So. We make it difficult for a third party to be effective okay mm -hmm. uh because we put them in a position where they can't really you know what i'm saying they can't really grab hold number one when they have debates uh where do they put them they have their own special debate for the third party candidates for the alternate candidates the debates basically are only for the two parties yeah, the well, who suddenly election. said they were they should be respected any more than than these alternate parties as well? Just because they don't have as many people doesn't mean you shouldn't respect them as part of the process. Yes, Jeff. And the guy who uh, ran for Texas as a independent mm -hmm. that he was in the uh, he was negotiating with the other. To you know, the Democrat and the Republican, Ross and Perot. him, yeah. Ross Perot, that's the guy. Yeah, yeah. So, um, let me see. You had your hand up, Jeff. No, that was it. Oh. The Ross Perot. Oh, the Ross Perot thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah the other, huh? yeah, the other candidate I can think of that was as effective on a state level, though, as effective. And I think he was a part of the same part, political party, the Reform Party. Uh, Jesse Ventura of. Uh, Minnesota. Uh, and what about Jesse? That he had as much, he had the charisma and the star power to like commandeer the, even though it was from within the state, the governor's mansion of, of uh, Yeah, but Minnesota. he turned out to be just a horrible governor. Hmm. And, you know, and I like Jesse. I mean, I know Jesse. And I, I like him. Uh, but, uh, he he won one term, and I think he got beaten in the second term. He couldn't go for a second term because he just he screwed up too badly. I think one of the, he committed a gaffe. I don't know if this is true or not. It was from from uh, English teacher I had in my senior year of high school, mm -hmm. uh, where he made a remark that religion is for the weak and feeble-minded, and that may have been what was his undoing. Is unraveling. Well, I don't remember that. Absolutely. I just remember that he was a shitty governor. You know. Um, it's funny that uh, two people who were in uh, movies together, two people who were in Predator, both became governors. Yeah. Arnold. Jesse Ventura and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold did win two, did get two terms. So. Did, did, what, did. Did, Arnold, yeah. did Reagan get a second term? I mean, did uh, did uh, Schwarzenegger get a second term? He did. Mm, I don't so. know. I'm I'm, almost, I'm willing to I'm willing to bet on that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, hold on 2000. a second. I will ask the 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 the, the 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 person who knows the most on this, and it isn't Josh. Mm -hmm. uh, Echo, how many terms did Arnold Schwarzenegger serve as governor of California? Here's something I found from the article Political Career of Arnold Schwarzenegger on Wikipedia. In the, in the first year of his first term as governor, Schwarzenegger proposed deep cuts in the state budget and was met with opposition. Mm. I know, but it doesn't say anything. First year, first term. Echo, how many terms did Arnold Schwarzenegger serve? Let's see if that... This might answer your question. Here we Arnold go. Schwarzenegger served as governor of California for seven years and one month between November 17th, okay. So he would have had to get reelected a second time. Yeah. 
So he got reelected a second time. Succeeded by Jerry Brown. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Who was then succeeded, of course, by Gavin Newsom, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 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 Gavin Newsom's kind of a disappointment for me. Is he really? Yeah. I think he, mm. you know, he, uh, he just, I, I question his ability. I had to give him mad props, though, when he was the, what was it, mayor of San Francisco oh, yeah. back in the early 2000s. Well, and nobody, ever, he, and nobody ever gives him credit for the fact that he um, uh, was uh, the, um, oh, something's wrong here. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out in a second. Um, uh, it, it, uh, that he had a, a certain uh, problem, uh, that he was the first guy to come along and say, let's let gay marriage happen here. And uh, that was pretty cool. That was and pretty he defied, cool. If I'm not mistaken, he defied the Bush administration. He defied, you know, the, at the time where you couldn't uh, have uh, gay people married. Oh, and he yeah. would allow them to have civil unions and, and, and whatnot yeah. Yeah. in San, San Francisco. Yeah. So, I mean, he was the reason why he and he was the first. In other words, nobody nobody thought of the concept of, let's say, same sex marriage. OK. Anywhere in the mm-hmm. United States. He was the first guy to make it a law in his city. And that started the ball rolling everywhere else in the country. But to this day, nobody really gives him credit for that. Was that before, even before, like Vermont and yep and uh, yep. Massachusetts? Yep. No, nope. the, the yep. very first, the very okay. first, yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, you know, I've often said I, I said it earlier as a joke on this show, but I, I people always used to ask me, how do you feel about uh, gay marriage? I said I'm against it, but then again, I'm against straight marriage too. Yeah, you right know, why, to too, yeah, why? Why should I want somebody to be as miserable as I've been? You know. <laughs> Uh, you know, this idea that marriage is the end all. The only thing is, is that there are rights you gain by being married and being a married couple that you don't enjoy separately in this country. And so that's the reason why I believed in gay marriage. You know, And there has to be an acknowledgement of some kind of union of some sort, especially as it pertains to children and custody here at battles. And well, when property. it comes to taxes, you used to be Giving. able to, if you, if, you, uh, uh, if you were a single person, you got taxed at a higher rate than if you were a couple. Yeah. You know, it's, so, it's, I mean, there was. I'm in favor of flat tax myself. There was, there was discrimination there. Uh, today, I just filed with the EEOC, the Equal Opportunity Employment Commission, complaining that my union has taken away our medical care. Mm-hmm. And a lot of members of my union are doing the same thing so that this union can be up to their ass in litigation. Class action? And, no, it's not a what class is- action. It's individual people. They, they just yeah. asked everybody to go online and just file with the EEOC. Uh, and, and then we'll wait. Good luck. Maybe get a call from them and and tell them, hey, you know, it was it was taken away from me. So anyway, uh, let me see here. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to call this to a close tonight. This is uh, kind of it's kind of slow. I the only it's reason awesome. I did it tonight was because I felt people would want to talk about this in great numbers, mm-hmm. but apparently I was to wrong. Credit, we did, huh? And to our credit, the one, two, three, five of us did. Yeah, well, yeah, four of you called. I appreciate it. I appreciate <clears> it. And <throat> uh, I don't know what's going to come on right after us because, you know. Uh, but I, I want to thank you all for calling me this evening. Let me just start the theme rolling here. No, I don't wrong. know how to do this unless I do it at the right time. There we go. <laughs> okay, there we go. There's the theme. Hey, thank you, Charlie. Appreciate it tonight. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you to Brian Ludwig. And thank you to Tony as well for joining us. If all of you would give me a big wave goodbye, I'll give you a wave goodbye back, okay? Uh, sorry we're bringing this to a close early, but, uh, you know, uh, we had uh, we had a, a, a nice little discussion here, and we said what we had to say, and then we lost it. No more, okay? So... I'm sorry we had to bring it to a close, but 
tomorrow night we'll do it for the full amount of time and uh, hope that people have a tendency to want to call. Uh, in the meantime, I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for tonight. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, oh, by the way, there's a sports show before us, the Franchise MC tomorrow night. And then we'll be here at 1030, Eastern Daylight Time, same time, same station in life. And if you see her, tell her that I love her a lot, okay? And by the way, stay safe out there. And please, don't listen to our president. Wear a mask. <laughs>